Thank you. Very stylish. Thank you. Thank you. So Steven, since the first episode, um, he just evolved. Oh yeah. Astronomically, um, for you as an actor and voice actor, how does that feel? That whole process of watching a character evolve into the progression that initially he was kind of like the under gym, and now yeah. he is technically the leader of the Crystal Gems in so many respects with business. Today. Yeah, it's it's been really interesting because I've sort of grown up in parallel yeah. to Stephen as the show's gone on, and I, um, Rebecca and I have had conversations about how we think that probably affected the development of Stephen in a lot of ways um, and really fed that dynamic. Um, it's rare that you get an opportunity to not just age with a character, but be able to develop the character alongside your collaborators on the show for this amount of time. Um, so I'm definitely thankful for that. But it's um, it's a, the, the main arc of the show has been very similar to you know arcs that I found parallels from in my life. So I relate to Steven in a lot of ways. Yeah. No, thank you. Appreciate it. So uh, there's the big reveal that Will's <laughs> court is King Diamond. Uh, yeah. How much of the like script and everything do you guys know beforehand, yeah. and like how did you react to that choice? Um, we've been sitting on that for a while, by the way. Like, okay. I've been. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's kind of excruciating. <laughs> I mean, we get the, the full storyboard and script for each episode as they come, and then um, for me personally, I talk to her a lot about a couple of stuff. Um, really, the, the only thing I don't ask about is stuff that's like specifically new knowledge to Steven. Okay. Um, but that, that was one thing that she did mention early on because it, it affects so much. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's always fun because we have at least a year lead time on the episodes and then, you know, if she tells me about them in advance, it's like a year and a half, two years before anybody's ever going to hear about it. So that's how far in the future we have to keep our mouths shut. Wow, <laughs> that's insane. With all the revelations that have come about for Steven, do you feel that he feels he needs to be a support for the gyms more so than anything with all that they've, you know, come to know? Absolutely. I mean, Steven puts everyone for himself. Um, and I think that, that sort of weighs on him. Uh, they, there's not a lot of times where, at least lately, where Steven is like um, asking for help for his own problems. Um, and I, he definitely tries to put everyone on his back and support in that way. And, you know, so it's a noble thing, but it, whether it's in the cartoon or in real life, it's not necessarily a, a good way to do things sometimes if you're not taking care of yourself. So I worry. Yeah, I just wanted to add on that because yeah. we realized that, you know, Stephen is this extreme impact. He's so comforting and caring for everyone else, and we only see glimpses of Stephen really breaking. Yeah. Do you think in the next season or in the future we'll actually get to kind of see more of a descent of Stephen mm -hmm. where he fully realizes what he's gone through and like we kind of really embrace what he's gone through and he gets to kind of tell his story and how he feels about all of this because I mean his mother like yeah. everything that's happened oh, it's, it's, so it's trauma after trauma yeah I, I can't say for certain but I, I, I'd imagine I mean you let enough pressure build up yeah I just want I was wondering what you thought maybe yeah how we would see that as far as Stephen yeah I, I would say yes I, I don't write the show but <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that you know, with everything going on Stephen is uh because he's under a lot of duress and you can't just walk away from of course. all skating sometimes. And with Reu oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, with Reunited, um, yeah. you got a great opportunity of kind of doing like a musical number for the opening. Yeah. And you kind of get to unravel to certain things that kind of like to what you alluded to, Stephen unpacking everything that's happened. And it's not necessarily good, but he's going to focus on the wedding. Um, as far as the musical number, you did a great job, for Thank one. You. Um, but how was that recording? What was that process like? And how, did you take enjoyment out of it? I mean, it was really exciting at the time because, you know, it's, it's a Ruby and Sapphire you know, wedding thing going on and then, you know, all of a sudden it's like, oh, we're doing, like, plot stuff today, okay. <laughs> Seriously. It, yeah, it just got nuts in the, in the middle of it, so it, even though we knew about a lot of those things ahead of time, it was still incredibly uh, exciting to finally be, like, laying it down and getting that out there. Um, you know, we've done so much since then, it's like, again, really nice for people to actually have eyes on it and be able to enjoy it. Yeah. 
when you guys record the show and like uh, different musical numbers, are you guys like all in the room together working off each other or individually? We try to do ensemble records as much as we can. Um, we're a little spread out. I've never recorded with Tom Sharpley and plays great on the East Coast. Um, okay. Estelle and I are only in the booth together on occasion. Um, she likes to kind of block record a lot of stuff. Um, but we, we do try to have at least one person in the booth. And, you know, at, at the very least, we spend a lot of time, like, playing recorded lines back and one person is recording for the other, just so we have reference, because it's, you know, it's such a narrative and character relationship-based show that you have to make sure that, um, if you're playing a scene with someone who's not there, then you're up to, up to speed on everything they did. So you've grown with the show, and as your voice has matured, do you feel Steven has really challenged you as a voice actor? as far as range and in tone? Yeah, I mean, I've always been able to get into my upper register um, as a kid and even after my voice changed. Um, so in, in norm, normal circumstances, you know, getting into this even voice isn't, wasn't as much of a problem after my voice changed. When my voice changed, that was the most challenging period I've ever had as an actor. Um, I lost a couple other shows where I was playing really, really young kids and uh, you know, I didn't know that they wanted to age Steven with the show, so I thought, okay, is this one next? Great. But <laughs> thankfully it wasn't. Um, but yeah, I, I also like had a lot of health issues related to um, my vocal cords, and that, that really got to me, because I was like, ah, oh, I thought I dealt with this after my voice changed. And, um, it was up and down, but I'm, I'm finally in a place where I know how to deal with it, so it's on the up and up. That's good. Um, I guess moving forward to the progression of season five and the ending of it, rather, where do you want to see Steven? Or what, or what can you say about where Steven is headed? I guess that's a better question. Uh, um, I really don't want to say something that's like, going to get me in trouble. Yeah. Um, I mean, so much crazy stuff happened in this episode, but there's, there's still... A, an apparent threat and a lot of uh, a lot of work to be done. So it's you know it's not sunshine and rainbows just yet. There's still um, some incredible, incredibly difficult things to do for yeah. the gems. So um, more conflict, I suppose. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, really briefly, like we're talking about Rose Quartz being Pink Diamond. A lot of fans actually guessed that a while ago. Um, yeah. Were there any like fan theories that you encountered uh, that like absolutely blew you away or were really strange? <laughs> um, the sequel fan theory was uh, uh, just incredibly. It blew me away because of how much detail was put into it. <laughs> the Ronaldo Snake Evil thing. It was yeah. turned into an actual fan theory for the show. Then. Really, I mean, it wraps up everything nicely. Um, and it explained a lot. I was very much enlightened. Are you here to shut it, shut it down then? There are no people. No, it's canon. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was just amazing to finally, like, understand the, the full unbridled brilliance of Rebecca's yeah. narrative. Snake people. Okay, so we have time for one more question. I actually have a quick one for you, Zach. Yeah. I, uh, obviously, you have a ton of success as a voice actor, but you also have an EP coming out soon, is that correct? Yes, thank you for asking. Yeah. Um, it's coming out August 3rd, so really soon. I'm going on tour with Nate Once a Battle um, to play live. It's it's exciting. It's a, a concept album story from like start to finish. Um, I, I've been working on it for almost three years since I wrote the first song. Um, and I, I do the music under my name, under Zach Callison. Cool. It's very... Um, it's you know theatrical, uh, very lyrical, um, and you know follows that common through line and theme. Um, there's like some hip hop and rap influence. There's some musical theater influence, and then the rock that I grew up on. It's it's definitely in its own way. Awesome. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. It's Thank you. The picture perfect color. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Hotter than the sunbeam, cause it's so real. Call him Mr. Wonderful, cause he is that deal. The night is dark, it's just before the dawn. And the dawn is coming quick, and crash is coming with T Nick. Yeah!